So I guess if you could just take us through the emotions of signing day, um, you, know, you don't always get everybody you want, but how did you guys feel like you guys came out of it? Well, uh, assessed a lot of the needs, got bigger on both lines of scrimmage. Offensive line has been a need here for a while. And just arriving into the program in February, you knew you had to get stronger, bigger, more massive up front. And that's something that is always going to be a priority here. It's one of the few positions that's not readily available within six, seven hours. And I think Coach Atkins obviously hit on four big time upside kids and two from South Georgia that were real high on. And Daughtry Richardson and Jalen Early is one of the best in Texas. So we're really excited about that. We've got the best QB in the country. He's a kid, AJ Duffy, that I've known. I recruited him when he was in ninth grader in when I was at Oregon continued that connection I've known his dad for over a decade when I walked in the door we were way way behind Michigan State and Arizona State it took me 62 days to catch up and then once we got past those guys um, I still remember to this day on that Wednesday calling up coach Norvell saying hey I got U.S. or I mean Under Armour All-American QB A.J. Duffy committed. Wow. He's going to call you in, in four hours. Offensive coordinator uh, Ken Dillingham was so excited. Uh, I, I relayed the news. Hey, I just landed uh, one of the best QBs in the country, our best QB of Florida State since Jameis Winston, and uh, worked as the primary recruiter for him because of my connection with the dad and with the family. And I think something that's been a trend in college football the last four or five years, and this even stems back to Coach Dennis Erickson when he was at Miami, would always go to California and get California QBs and surround them with Florida receivers. And that recipe always works. And that's something we're going to try to do here because that recipe will always work. And that California is the best place for quarterbacks. You saw that at Old Miss, Ohio State, Georgia, Clemson, and Alabama, all four of their starting QBs were for, from mm -hmm. Southern California. Well, now Florida State's got theirs and A.J. Duffy, a coach's kid, all of 6'2 plus, 223. I'll let you know this, he clocked a 21 on the GPS the other day, so he can move too, but his real strength is his mind, his poise, and he can spin it, man. He's mm -hmm. accurate. If he would have, outside of the pandemic, if he would have stayed at California playing for his dad, he had such a big freshman and sophomore year, he was on pace to break the California state record for most passing yards and passing touchdowns, which is incredible. Think of the guys that have come out of that state, Aaron Rodgers, John Elway, it's a who's who of quarterbacks. And so he was on that pace. So Florida State should be real fortunate. That's a position they've been trying to get right since Jameis Winston here. So we're real excited about the future. And one of the biggest reasons he chose Florida State is his dad has always loved Mike Norvell's offense since he knew him at Arizona State. And I mean, I love it. No huddle, no mercy. And who, who wouldn't love it? And that was one of the big appeals for them, plus a, a favorable depth chart where he's got a shot to compete early in his career. So we're excited about the offensive line. Obviously a franchise QB. Got one of the top tailbacks in the Southeast in Rodney Hill. He's a guy that in the spring, there was only five or six athletes, regardless of position in the country, that clocked a four or five laser, and he was one of them. Hmm. When he came to camp, his second gear was faster than his first, so he can hit the home run, a high character guy, got a frame to get bigger, can catch the ball out of the backfield. Obviously, he'll have a little growth playing a higher level of football like most of these kids, but you got to love the attitude. you got to love the upside of Rodney Hill. Two really good tight ends that I think in year two will have a shot to be the one and two at tight end. Brian Courtney is one of our best evals in the class. He was a guy that a friend of mine, former NFL scout Alex Santos, put me on in the spring. After I found him, I delivered him to, to Coach Kenny Dillingham. We offered him. And then he blew up afterwards, got Virginia, got Kentucky, high school QB. Like a lot of these athletes, they like to get the best player the ball. His, his linebacker film is actually as good as anything. Came to camp, was the talk of the camp because he can separate. He's new to the position, has upside of the position. 6'3", 6'4", 225 and can go. 
has a good frame, high character kid, tough kid. Jarrell Powers and Jalen Early play for one of the top 10 high school programs in the country. Coach Reggie Samples is a close friend of myself and Randy Shannon. So we had some legit help there in South Dallas. I'm talking Duncanville, Lancaster, obviously DeSoto and uh, Cedar Hill, some of the best football in our country. And to get those two guys, Powers is all a 6'4 and a half, 235, big frame, can be an inline guy, can move it out. So we're excited about getting the offensive roster bigger because that's what a dose of what this roster needs. And we're not done yet. Obviously, you're looking for more at wide out. And the cool thing about today is in college football, you have the portal. And the portal is a free agency. And that's only going to add to teams. And, and they used to fill it through transfers or JUCOs. Now you're going straight portal for instant impact. So expect to see, you know, some needs filled at that spot relatively soon. And hopefully, uh, you know, we're already starting class at January 5th. So some, some early enrollees, if you will, on defense. You got three defensive linemen we're excited about. Hester in, in Jacksonville, legacy guy, one of the top pass rushers in the state. Bishop Thomas is a guy that Coach Higgins and Coach Norvell really excited about. Played both ways in high school, high motor, really athletic. One of the more athletic defensive linemen you'll find in the Southeast. And the guy that I'm most excited about, where they're supposed to come from, and Daniel Lyons, Homestead, Florida. Coach Higgins did a great job building a rapport with that family. All a 6'4", 265, has a frame to get even bigger. I think the best linebacker in the state this year was Omar Graham from Lottie. True South Florida dog, high character, had a big time senior season playing both ways. Really has that edge that you get out of a South Florida kid and a lot of upside. And then I thought Coach Woodson, along with Kenyatta Watson, got the best player in the panhandle. And the best player in the panhandle should traditionally always go to Florida State, Nazare Thomas. Close friend of mine, uh, Uncle Luke, the head coach for uh, Miami Edison, said he was the best player that he saw all year. And he can play both ways. We see him as a defensive back, high character, smart, corner skills, safety body. So we're real excited about him. And then obviously the first uh, LOI in this morning was Sam McCall, five-star guy, can play all three ways, a do-it-all guy really explosive and we can't wait to get him in here in January. I think he's got an NFL upside and he's an instant impact guy. So it's kind of the rundown on oh, all great. my guys in the class. Um, the South Florida guys, how important is it to get some really good players out of South Florida? Yeah, I think at Florida State, you always want to get four or five every year. Mm -hmm. I think the best uh, football in our country is played in Dade and Broward and Palm Beach. I've always thought that. Got to learn it really good when I lived down there as a national analyst at 24-7 and going through all those schools and adding a coach like Randy Shannon now gives us boots on the ground where we have ties for a lot of coaches down there and a lot of coaches that think really highly of myself and Kenyatta and Sabbath Joseph. Now we got a guy that, you know, we can throw some alley-oops to and, and he can dunk it. And I think that'll be always an emphasis at Florida State and we'll put more resources into that going forward. And uh, we're excited about the ones we got out of there. We felt we got the, the top offensive tackle in South Florida this year, the top linebacker in South Florida, as well as the top defensive tackle. And then just seeing him last summer when you guys have those youth clinics down there, the way people kind of respond to Coach Shannon because of his, his you know, everybody knows him down there. Right. Uh, how important is that with him staying on? It's a, it's a mega big time upside get. I mean, huge upgrade. And he's got so much knowledge and so much wisdom and he's recruited that area for his whole career. He's developed NFL Hall of Famers. He's well respected by all the high school coaches, not only in that state, but throughout the Southeast. Like I already said in Dallas, that helped us get those two kids there. So, I mean, you can't get enough great ones like him. He's a Hall of Famer in my book.